Okay guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we will try to discuss the answer of our quiz number one in cost accounting. So although I provided three sets of exam, pare-pares lang naman yung laman nun, nagkaiba lang sa numbering, tsaka dun sa amount, but the concept are the same. So for discussion purposes, magdi-discuss lang tayo ng isang set. So proceed na tayo dun sa ating mga question. So yung first part ng question natin is all about true or false. So, i-determine lang natin if the statement is true or false. So, start tayo sa number one. So, number one question, depreciation is always considered as product cost for external reporting purposes in manufacturing firm. So, ang answer natin dito ay false because as we all know, ang depreciation ay pwede po yan ma-record under product cost and other period cost. So, nire-record ang depreciation expense under product cost kapag ito ay napupunta sa ating factory overhead or yung mga material or mga equipment na ginagamit natin sa pag-produce ng ating product. So, if that's the case, that specific property plan and equipment is considered as product cost. However, ang sinasabi kasi ng statement is always. So, dahil yung sinabi ng statement is always, so therefore, the answer is false. Kasi some depreciation are also recorded under operating expenses such as office equipment and depreciation of the building. So, ang sagot natin sa number one ay false. Statement number two. So, sabi sa statement number two, Variable costs are costs whose per unit costs vary as to activity level rises and fall. So, as we all know, ang variable costs ay lumalaki ang ating total costs kapag marami tayong activity level. However, kung mapapansin nyo sa statement, ang tinatanong po is variable cost per unit. So dahil per unit po ang tinatanong, ang tinatanong dyan, so ang answer po natin ay false. So bakit false? Kasi ang per unit ng variable cost is always constant under or within the relevant range. So, ang nagbabago lang po is yung total cost, di ba? Kasi nga, kaya nga siya tinawag na variable cost kapag dumadami activity level, so dumadami din yung ating cost. Pero as per unit, dahil unit ang tinatanong, ang ating variable cost per unit is always constant. At of course, at, uh, within the relevant range. So, dahil po ang sinasabi niya dan, ang variable cost daw ay nagbabari depending on the activity level per unit. So, ang sagot po natin ay false. Next statement, managerial accounting places less emphasis on precision and more emphasis on flexibility and relevance data than does financial accounting. So, in this statement, ang answer natin ay true. Alam naman natin ang managerial accounting, so ang focus natin dito is yung needs ng management. So, that's why nagpe-place siya ng less emphasis sa precision kasi nga, mas kailangan po natin yung relevant. So, most of the time, ang ginagamit natin sa managerial accounting is yung mga estimated cost. Kaya yung mga data na nandoon ay hindi siya guaranteed na yung, although minimake sure ng management na yung mga amount doon ay malapit sa katotohanan, pero dahil nga we are talking about future cost, so hindi masyadong ina-emphasis natin doon yung precision kasi ang focus natin sa managerial accounting is relevance. So, and flexibility of course, kasi sa financial accounting meron tayong sinusunod na uh, accounting standard. So that's why sa uh, financial accounting, so nagpo-focus tayo ng more on precision and less on flexibility. So, since sinabi naman ng statement na material accounting places less emphasis on precision and more emphasis on flexibility uh, rather than the financial accounting, then the statement is considered as true. Okay, so let's proceed to number four. So, number four, an external financial report, factory utilities cost incurred may be included in an asset account on the balance sheet at the end of the period. So, as you can see, if we say utilities cost, normally ang pumapasok sa utak natin ay utilities expense. Kasi nga, ano yan eh, ginagamit yan ng management para sa pag-operate, para sa operation. Pero, as you can see on the statement, so that the utilities uh, were incurred in the factory. So, as, we can, as you can see, ang ating factory supplies, alam naman natin kung saan yan mapupunta, napupunta yan sa ating factory overhead. So, dahil napupunta yan sa factory overhead, ang pinupuntahan niyan is yung work in process inventory at napupunta yan sa ating finished goods inventory once the product is already produced or it, it was already or tapos na yung production ng product. So, in this case, sinasabi lang po natin for extender financial reporting 
purposes, ang factory supplies po ay nai-include natin yan sa asset in the form of inventory. So that's why in number 4, the statement is considered as true. True yung statement kasi hindi porket utilities yan, automatic i-record na natin sa expense. Kasi ang factory supplies, magiging part yan ng work in process inventory. At the end of the day, magiging part yan ng finished goods inventory. So magiging expense lang yan once the item or the finished goods was or uh, once the finished goods is already sold. So pag nangyari yun, so from finished goods, magiging cost of goods sold siya. So dahil sinasabi dito ang factory supplies daw, ay pwede maging part ng asset, then we can say that the statement is true. Okay, for, let us proceed to the fifth statement. So sabi dyan, advertising costs are considered product costs for external financial reports since they are incurred to promote a specific product. While it's true that the advertising costs as in, are incurred uh, to, in, to promote the specific product, this is not considered as part of product cost. So bakit hindi siya considered as product cost? Kasi nga, tapos na yung product eh. So ibig sabihin, hindi na siya nakaka-add ng value doon sa ating product mismo. So therefore, advertising cost is considered as period cost under distribution cost. So therefore, under number 5, ang asagot natin po dyan ay false. Okay, so let's proceed to number 6, which is a multiple choice question. So, a cost that does not change in total with the change in activity level is called. So, ang answer natin dyan, of course, we have the fixed cost. So, invalidate natin yung ibang choices. So, as we all know, kapag sinabi natin fixed cost, so, ibig sabihin, from the word itself, fixed. So, regardless of the activity level within the relevant range, the cost remain unchanged, ba? Kaya nga siya fixed cost. So, invalidate natin yung ibang choices. So, punta tayo doon sa letter A. Ang mixed cost po ay nagbabago ang kanyang cost kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng activity level. Kasi if we say mixed cost, it is a combination of variable cost tsaka ng fixed cost. So, as we all know, if the activity level changes, the variable cost in total also changes. Kapag lumiit ang ating activity level, the variable cost ay lumiliit din. So, dahil nga ang composition ng mixed cost is variable cost plus fixed cost, so therefore, any change in activity level will have a direct impact on the total mixed cost. So, letter A is wrong. So, letter C is also wrong kasi alam naman natin, pag sinabi natin prime cost, it is a combination of direct materials plus direct labor. At alam naman natin na ang direct materials ay direct labor are considered as variable cost. So, ang variable cost, nagbabago po ang ating total cost kapag nagbabago ang ating activity level kasi nakadepende lang naman yan doon sa activity level ng pro production process natin. So, letter C is also wrong. So, letter D is also wrong kasi nga, ang variable cost ay nagbabago in total uh, depende on the change in activity level. So, for number 6, the correct answer is letter B, which is... Okay, so let's proceed to number 7. So, manufacturing overhead would not have a subsidiary ledger account for. So, ang inahanap po natin yung hindi na nagme-maintain ng manufacturing overhead. So, ang tatanggalin po natin dito is yung hindi recorded as factory overhead. Which is, alam naman natin, ang tamang sagot dyan is letter DOG. Because shipping cost is considered as the distributable cost which is located under operating expense. So, ang utilities na related sa factory, property taxes, at insurance, lahat po yan ay pupunta sa ating factory overhead. Kapag normal cost na ang ginagamit, nire-record po natin yan sa ating factory overhead control. So, ang answer natin is letter DOG. Okay, so let's proceed to number 8. So, question, warehouse rent of finished goods is part of? So, ang hinahanap po natin dito is yung warehouse rent ng finished goods. So, as we discussed in our last discussion, pag pinag-uusapan po natin yung warehouse rent, we have to be particular kung anong inventory ang minemaintain. Kasi iba ang treatment kapag ang inventory ay finished goods, materials, at work in process. So, as we all know, meron tayong tatlong major na inventory accounts na minemaintain sa manufacturing business. We have materials, we have the whip, and we have the finished goods. So, alam naman natin kapag ang warehouse cost ay related sa materials sa whip, considered yan as product cost. So, product cost kasi it will be part of the manufacturing cost at dahil hindi pa tapos ang product. Kapag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay warehouse rent ang finished goods, since the 
goods is already finished. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na yan nakaka-add ng value yung warehouse rent natin. So, therefore, ang maintenance or rent expense related to the warehouse rent ng ating finished goods is cons already considered as period cost. So, dahil period cost na po ang warehouse rent ng ating finished goods, so, tingnan natin yung mga choices. So, yung letter A, which is prime cost, na alam naman natin, ang composition yan ay direct materials at direct labor. So, therefore, yung letter A ay mali na. Kasi nga, hindi nga siya product ko. So, dapat period cost na yung ating rent ng warehouse. So, letter B, we have the factory cost. So, letter B is also wrong. Dahil nga ang factory cost is a product cost, ang hinahanap po natin ay period cost. So, ang natitira na lang pagpipilian si letter C at si letter D. So, sa case natin, dahil ang ating warehouse rent, ang rent ay related doon sa maintenance ng ating finished goods. So, ibig sabihin, related pa rin naman siya sa product, pero hindi lang dahil tapos na nga yung product, hindi na yun i-record sa product. So, hanapan po natin ng, ng corresponding uh, period cost. So, sa period cost, meron tayong dalawa. So, pwede po yan maging distribution cost or selling cost or admin cost. So, dahil related to sa product na binibenta natin, so, ang samang tagot po ay distribution cost or yung ating selling cost. So, yung letter D, mali na po yan kasi yung admin cost related po ito sa mga supporting department such as yung accounting department or admin department. So, tandaan kapag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay Warehouse rent, tas related siya sa finished goods, ilalagay nyo po yan sa operating expense or sa period cost at hindi yan ilalagay under product cost. Okay, so let's proceed to number 9. So number 9, in job order costing system, the peso amount of entry that debits finished goods inventory and credit work in process inventory is the sum of the cost charged to all job. So, norm, uh, so ibig sabihin daw, ang ginawa daw ng management ay nag-debit ng finished goods then credit whip. So, hanapin po natin ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng transaction na yan. So, check natin yung mga choices. Sabi doon, letter A, ito daw ba yung started in process during the period? If we say started in process during the period, kung matatandaan nyo ang ating cost of goods sold report, it, yung, ang equivalent nito is yung ating manufacturing cost. So, dahil ang manufacturing cost, alam naman natin, hindi, ang record niyan ay hindi debit finish goods and credit whip. So, ang record ng manufacturing cost is debit work in process inventory, then credit the related accounts, wedding, wedding raw materials, wedding payroll, or pwede rin namang applied factory overhead. So, ibig sabihin, letter A is wrong. So, punta tayo dun sa letter B. Sabi sa letter B, this is the in process during the period. So, pag sinabi natin in process during the period, it pertains to work in process. So, pa, pag pinag-uusapan natin yung work in process, so dapat nagde-debit tayo ng work in process. So, dahil nag-credit tayo ng work in process doon sa statement sa taas, so therefore, letter B is also wrong. So, punta naman tayo sa letter C. Sabi sa letter C, ito daw yung completed and sold during the period. Pag sinabi natin completed and sold during the period, we are talking about the cost of goods sold. So, dahil ang cost of goods sold po, alam naman natin, ang record natin ng cost of goods sold ay debit, cost of goods sold, then credit, finished goods. So, dahil hindi niya na-meet yung requirement na kanina kasi sabi daw do, nag-debit daw tayo ng finished goods inventory, then credit ng work process inventory. So, ibig sabihin yung letter C is also wrong. So, yung natitira na lang po natin sa na choices, the choice is yung letter dog. So, ano ba yung sinasabi sa letter dog? Sabi sa letter dog, these are the completed items during the period. So, sabi nga, or ang tinatawag po natin na cost of goods, manufactured. So, dahil ito ang ating cost of goods manufactured, kapag nag-journal nag -journal entry natin yung cost of goods manufactured, alam naman natin, nagde-debit tayo ng finished goods, then work in process. Kasi tinatransfer lang naman natin yung ating uh, work in process to finished goods kasi nga considered na to as finished. So, therefore, the right answer is letter do. Okay, so let's proceed to number 10. So, number 10, manufacturing cost is equal to, so, alam naman natin, pag sinabi nating manufacturing cost, this is the combination of direct materials, direct labor, and we have the factory overhead. So, hanapin lang natin kung ano yung nagko-compose ng direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead kasi yung binigay, yung mga combination nitong tatlo. So, ang tamang sagot niyan, para mas madalian tayo, which is yung letter boy 
which is conversion cost plus direct materials. Kasi as we all know, if we say conversion cost, it is a combination of direct labor and the factory overhead. Then conversion cost plus direct materials is equal to manufacturing cost. So let's invalidate yung other choices para ma-sure tayo na tama yung sagot natin na letter boy. So yung letter A choice, which is prime cost plus conversion cost, kapag binasag natin yan, so meron tayong direct materials plus direct labor. Yung conversion cost naman, we have direct labor plus factory overhead. So as you can see, na double yung direct labor, so ibig sabihin yung letter A is wrong. So letter C tayo. So letter C, prime cost daw plus direct labor is equal to manufacturing cost. So alam naman natin, ang prime cost is direct materials plus direct labor. Tapos i-add pa daw yung direct labor, so na double siya, tapos walang factory overhead. So therefore, letter C is also wrong. So last, we have the product cost plus period cost. Alam naman natin, pag ang product cost plus period cost, ito po yung ating total expenses. So dahil hindi po yan nagkocorrespond sa ating manufacturing cost, so therefore, letter D is also wrong. So for this specific question, the best answer is letter boy, which is conversion cost plus direct materials. So pwede rin naman natin kung prime cost yung isang givens, dapat prime cost plus factory Okay, so let's proceed to number 11. So, ang question sa number 11, so expense A daw is a fixed cost, expense B is a variable cost, and during the current year, the activity level has increased, but still within the relevant range. In terms of cost per unit of activity level, would it, we would expect that, so nagbigay ng mga possible choices, we have A, B, C, and D. So, dito kawain nyo po muna yung mga important details. Ang hinahanap po natin, we have two costs daw na kailangan I figure out, so we have the cost A and we have cost B. So, ang inahanap daw, what if daw the, the activity level increase? So, dumami daw yung ating activity level. So, si expense A, alam naman natin, sinabi dun sa taas, fixed cost yan, tapos si B ay variable cost. So, ano ba yung mga, tapos, at then, uh, another uh, item na kailangan nating tandaan dito, ang pinapahanap po ay change ang mangyayari doon sa ating cost per unit. So, cost per unit po ah, so we have to consider yung kapag nag-increase daw yung activity level, ano yung mangyayari sa cost per unit ni A which is a fixed cost and cost per unit ni B which is a variable cost. So, alam naman natin kapag ang fixed cost, tas dumami ang ating activity level, anong nangyari sa ating fixed cost? Dahil marami yung naghahate, so bumababa po ang ating fixed cost per unit. So, din naman sa, sa variable cost which is yung letter B, so, kapag nag increase po yung activity level, lagi nyo tatandaan ng ating cost per unit is still unchanged or remains constant. So, ibig sabihin, wala pong mangyayari sa ating variable cost per unit. So, tandaan doon sa ating fixed cost per unit, kapag tumaas ang activity level, so ang ating fixed cost per unit decreases. Kapag ang variable cost naman natin remains unchanged kasi constant yan at a specific time or yung ating within the relevant range. So, i-check na natin dun sa mga choices kung ano yung mga nag-swak dun sa ating ginawang analysis. So, yung letter A, sinabi daw dyan, expense A has remained unchanged. So, this is wrong kasi sinabi nga natin dito, the fixed cost or expense rate, uh, expense A decreases. So, letter B, expense B has decreased daw. So, expense B decreased per unit. So, the answer is also wrong kasi sinabi natin dito, the variable cost remains as change per unit. So, punta tayo sa letter C. Yung expense A daw has decreased, which is nangyari nga kasi nag-decrease naman talaga. So, ibig sabihin ang sagot natin dito ay letter C. So, let's proceed doon sa letter D. Kung mamaya kasi, pwede rin yung D. Sabi sa letter D, expense B has increased. Sabi natin dito, yung variable cost per unit remains constant. So, ibig sabihin yung letter B is also wrong. So, the right answer is letter C, which is expense A has decreased kasi nga dumami yung activity level. So, marami yung maghahate doon sa total fixed cost which is remains unchanged in total, but in unit, it decreases in value. So the right answer is letter C. So let's proceed to number 12. So if the cost of goods sold is greater than the cost of goods manufactured, so ito daw yung, ano daw yung mga possible reason bakit mas mataas yung cost of goods sold greater than the cost of goods manufactured. So dito, para hindi kayo mahirapan, kung nahirapan kayo mag-analysis, tandaan nyo yung ating formula. So sa formula natin, alam naman natin, we have the cost of goods manufactured plus finished goods beginning, diba? which is equal to 
total goods available per sale, then less natin yung finished goods ending para makuha natin si cost of goods sold. So, sinasabi sa statement, mas mataas daw yung cost of goods sold over dun sa cost of goods manufactured. So, uh, pwede mo kasing isipi, lagyan ng value para hindi ka mahirapan, di ba? So, let's say yung ating cost of goods sold, we have 100 pesos. Tapos, yung finished goods inventory, we have, uh, let's say, 50. So, ibig sabihin ng ating total goods available per sale, we have 150. So, sinasabi daw dyan, mas mataas daw yung ating cost of goods sold. So, yung cost of goods sold, mas mataas. So, sabihin natin, ito ay fifth, uh, 150. Ayos, sige. Sabihin na lang natin na 120. So, dahil mas mataas yung cost of goods sold compared dun sa ating cost of goods manufactured, so, malamang yung ating finished goods inventory magiging 30 na lang. So, based on your analysis, kung check nyo, yung beginning balance natin na 50, naging 30 na lang. So, as you can see, from 50, it become it became 30. So, ibig sabihin, ang change natin sa, sa ating inventory account ay decrease. So, hanapin po natin yung effect na nag-decrease daw yung ating finished goods inventory. So, punta natin dun sa letter A. So, finished goods inventory has decreased during the period, which is A naman talaga yung totoong nangyari. So, ang sagot natin, letter A. So, let's invalidate the other choices. So, yung letter B that man daw, work in process inventory has decreased uh, during the period. So, dito wala pong pake si work in process kasi nga, na-compute na natin si cost of goods manufactured. So, ibig sabihin, uh, regardless kung ano nangyari dun sa change in work in process, wala po yung effect doon sa ating cost of goods sold sa ating cost of goods manufactured. So, letter B is wrong. Letter C, finished goods inventory has increased. So, that is also wrong kasi nga, mas mataas yung ating cost of goods sold kasi uh, sa ating cost of goods manufactured. Based dun sa mga amount na nilatag natin, from 50, which is the assumed figures, naging 30 na lang siya. So, if eventually, ang alam ang ibig sabihin niyan, bumaba yung ating finished goods inventory. So, letter C is also wrong. So, yung letter dog naman, so total manufacturing cost must be greater than the cost of goods manufactured. This is also wrong. Kasi nga, wala namang kinalaman ng ating manufacturing cost sa cost of goods manufactured tsaka yung cost of goods sold. So, ang tamang sagot lang talaga is yung letter A, which is finished goods inventory, has decreased during the period. So, yung mga magaling mag-analyze, actually, hindi nyo na kailangan lagyan ng figures. Isipin mo na lang yan ng mabilisan, di ba? So, based on the information sa taas, sinabi dyan, the cost of goods sold is greater than the cost of goods manufactured. So, based on uh, our analysis, so bakit mas malaki ang ating cost of goods sold kesa sa cost of goods an o, of manufactured? So, ibig sabihin, mas marami tayong nabenta kesa sa nagawa natin. So, saan ba natin kukuhanin yung binenta natin kesa dun sa mga nagawa natin during the period? Siyempre, manggagaling yun dun sa ating beginning finished goods inventory. So, dahil kukuhain natin yung sum of the cost of goods sold, dun sa ating finished goods beginning, so therefore, the, begin, the beginning inventory should be decreased. So, entirely, ang magiging effect nyan sa ating finished goods inventory, bababa talaga. So, uh, ang magiging result nyan, the finished goods inventory, will be decreased during the period. So, ang answer natin ay letter. Okay, so let's proceed to number 13. So, over-applied overhead resulting from anticipated and immaterial price increases for overhead items should be written up by so, in this case, as we all know, yung sinabi daw dyan na uh, over-application is immaterial daw. So, dahil immaterial yung changes natin, so, alam naman natin na hindi na po natin papakailaman yung ating inventory account. So, ibig sabihin yung letter C at letter D, tanggal na po yan sa ating mga pagpipilian, di ba? So, ang pipiliin na lang natin is yung letter B or yung letter A. So, ano ba yung magiging effect niyan sa ating cost of goods sold? So, kapag may over-application at under-application, at as immaterial yung effect niyan, ang, dine, ang sinasabi sa atin, i-close na lang daw natin yan sa cost of goods sold. So, ano yung magiging effect niyan sa cost of goods sold? Babawasan ba natin or dadagdagan? So, babalikan nyo lang po yung mga entering ginawa nyo kung paano ba natin in-entry yung over-applied factory overhead. Kasi alam naman natin yung ating entry, no nag-apply tayo, so meron tayo diyang whip, Tapos, applied factory overhead. So, ngayon, kapag nagka-over application tayo, so, ang gagawin po natin is, syempre, babawasan po natin yung over application kasi nag-over application kay. So, ibig sabihin, magde-debit ka dyan ng applied factory overhead, then credit ka ng over application, di ba? 
over applied overhead. So, ibig sabihin, may lumulutang po tayo na over applied back or overhead, which is a credit balance. So, ngayon, ikoklose na po natin yan sa cost of goods sold. So, pag close po yan, of course, mag-debit ka dyan ng over applied, then credit ka ng cost of goods sold. So, as you can see, nag-credit po tayo ng cost of goods sold. So, ibig sabihin, ano ba ang normal balance ng cost of goods sold? Ang normal balance ng cost of goods sold ay debit. So, dahil nag-credit ka, so ibig sabihin, binawasan mo. So, ibig sabihin, kapag may over-application at yan po ay write-off na natin, so therefore, it should, the cost of goods sold must be decreased. So, the right answer is letter A. So, dati letter A ang sagot, so letter B ay mali na rin po. Okay? Okay, number 14. So, in a job order costing system, the use of indirect materials would usually be reflected in the general ledger as increase in. So, kapag nag-issue po tayo ng indirect materials sa production, so alam naman natin, ang hindi po yan nire-record under direct materials kasi nga indirect materials yan. So, ang pinupuntahan po niyan ay factory overhead. So, dahil uh, under normal order job order costing system, ang ina-employ po dyan yung tinatawag po nating normal costing. So, therefore, considered po yung issuance ng indirect materials as an actual cost. So, dahil ang nire-record natin sa work-in process ay yung ating mga applied cost, so therefore, yung issuance ng indirect materials from raw materials inventory to uh, production, so ang ine-entryhan po natin dyan ay debit ka ng factory overhead control, then credit ka ng raw materials, kung nanggaling yan sa ating raw materials. So, hanapin mo lang yung may related dun sa factory overhead control. So, sa case natin, I think ang answer dyan is letter dog. So, yung stores control, normally ginagamit po to for direct materials. ba? Yung work in process naman, ginagamit naman to doon sa tatlo. ba? Kapag nag uh, i-issue tayo sa production, it's either direct materials, direct labor, and also factory overhead applied. So, dahil ang pinag-uusapan natin na yung actual issuance ng indirect materials to production, so ang tamang sagot po ay manufacturing overhead control. Yung letter C is also wrong kasi nga applied, applied cost lang naman yung nilalagay natin sa working process. Dahil ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is yung actual issuance of indirect materials, so sa general ledger, isasama po yan sa manufacturing overhead control. Okay, so for the last question, so, which of the following are basic inventories of manufacturer? So, alam naman natin yan. Madali na yan. So, we have raw materials, work in process, then finished goods. So, hanapin mo yung tatlo na present. So, yung letter A, indirect materials. So, mali na to. So, goods in process and raw materials. So, check mo yan. Check mo yan. So, ibig sabihin, hindi niya nasunod yung tatlo. So, letter A is wrong. So, pwede tayo sa letter B. Finish goods, check yung finish goods. Raw materials, check. So, indirect uh, direct materials is wrong kasi naulit yung raw materials. So, letter B is also wrong. Letter C, raw materials, check. Goods in process, other term per work in process, check. Finish goods, check. So, ibig sabihin, the right answer is letter C. So, letter D, check natin. Baka tama rin naman. So, yung letter D, raw materials, check. Factory overhead, wrong kasi factory overhead is just part of the work in process. And direct labor is also part of the work in process inventory. So, isa lang yun na meet na requirement. So, letter D is also wrong. So, the right answer is letter D.